this is a quick video to encourage us. How are you dealing with things around you at the moment? Are you in, everyone I think is in self-isolation now, most people are. So what are you doing differently to make sure this time is productive for you? Are you just sitting down and getting worried and anxious? Are you letting anxiety take over? Or are you allowing yourself to think and change how you think, change your thought process and change how you work? What are you doing differently? This is the time to do things differently. It's not a time to sit down and be worried. It's not a time to sit down and think, you know, on what to do. You can sit down, make plans, make plans. What are you going to do next? At least we all have the time. We have all the time on our hands now to sit down, make all the plans, set goals, you know. You can have quarterly goals. Yes, there's nothing wrong with having your daily goals, weekly goals, quarterly goals, even yearly goals. You can still do that now, even though we are in lockdown. We are in lockdown doesn't mean that you are limited. It doesn't mean you cannot plan and get things done. So use the time well. Make sure you are getting your plans done. Most companies are now moving on to online business. It's something we have been doing. Small businesses have been doing this for a while. So many companies are now learning how to do this. So I'm encouraging us, what is it you can do? What can you teach? What can you um, show people how to do online? If you are not sure how to work online, contact me. I've always worked online. I know how to make use of different platforms to make sure your work is done effectively. And as, you, as most of you may already know, I teach in a secondary school and I coach women as well. I coach women, help them become um, leaders, transform them into confidence leaders, wherever you are at home, in your workplace, wherever. I coach you to become confident at whatever you do. So if you would like to get in touch with me, you want to know how to become confident, you want to know how to transfer your business online or how to teach something and you're not sure how, contact me. I can show you. I'm a secondary school teacher. I know how to look at the curriculum and all of that. I can show you what to do and how to go about it so that you, can, you are set up online for this time because most companies, some, are lay, some have laid off their staff. Some are in the process of laying off more people and people are worried about how to cope financially. But I'm here to tell you, this is not the time to be thinking of being stressed out at the moment because stress can lead to other things. You know, the virus, we know there's a virus around at the moment. This virus, I made an earlier post today. The virus is nothing but fear. It is real, the virus is real, it's out there. Many people have died from the virus but everyone's still breathing. As long as you are still breathing, don't allow fear in. Once you allow fear in, it cripples you and you become, you're not able to be productive. You can't be productive when you are living in fear. You know, don't allow fear cripple you. This is the time to rise up, to wake up every day with a plan. If you're not sure what to do and you want me to help you out in any way, do contact me. My website is called gloriousglowempowerment.com. I'll leave a link in the description box, gloriousglowempowerment.com. You know, fear, there's a part of the brain called amygdala, and it is responsible for how we um, perceive emotions like stress, fear, sadness, happiness, and all of that. Once you let it in, it sends a signal to the rest of your brain you know, and then you either fight. This is where you have the fight or flight response. You either stay to fight or you run. So that's where your heart, your, your heart race, you know, your heart starts to race and you perspire, you start to sweat and all of that because you are scared or you are worried. So that part of the brain, if you are feeling it with negative things all the time, that's what it will feed you back. It will feed that back to you. It will remind you, oh, remember when this happened, how you felt, you were scared, weren't you? And then you start to feel the fear again. 
But if you are feeding your brain, you are feeding yourself, you know, your subconscious positive things, you are saying affirmations and, you know, having your gratitude journal and all of that, you are able to stand firm and say, no, I'm not going to be scared. And you are able to make a plan on how to move forward. All right. So that's what I came here to tell us. We need to, this is a time, stay at home. Don't be up and about, except it's necessary. One person in the family, not everyone. Don't take everyone in your family to the shops, to the supermarket and all of that. One person in the family. And when you go out, protect yourself, sanitize and all that. Be wise when you're out there. Be wise in your home. Keep yourself and your family safe. It's very important. Keep yourself and your family safe. Don't give in to fear. Don't give in to fear because that's what this is all going. This is going to be if people don't take their time, they will be scared and end up not being able to achieve anything. Use this time well. We are we're all we all need to use this time well. So as an identity coach, I help women specifically to understand their God-given talents, who God has made them to be. And because of these stressful times, I have a um, program on Christian mindfulness. Okay, I'll share my screen now. I do something on Christian mindfulness. Christian mindfulness helps to reduce um, stress. It helps you to be focused and all of that, all right? So when you come onto my website, you go to work with me and it will show you the programs that I have and how you can contact me. So you scroll down and then find the one on Christian mindfulness, if that's the one that interests you, because at the moment there's so much going on. See, what is mindfulness? You find that package there. I have a program for individuals and I have a program for a group of people. So if you want to come as a group, contact me on my website and we can arrange on how to you know get you started. If you want to if you are coming on your own as well contact me on my website gloriousglowempowerment.com. Mind there's no need to be stressed out at the moment but if for any reason you are, you are stressed out it is understandable is we are facing times that we have never seen before. So it's understandable and you have help. I'm here to help you. I'm here to make sure you are not stressed out. I'm here to make sure you are calm and you're able to achieve the dreams and the goals you've always set out to achieve. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let the virus stop you. Okay, you're not limited. So that's my website. Go on to it, contact me, and then we can get you started. So I thought it would be nice to share what I have with you already and all of that. So it's been great talking to you and I hope to see you on the other side and I hope we can work together to get, make sure you achieve your dreams and purpose. Thank you. Bye. Hello, Glory Olamide here. Welcoming and inviting you to the Whole Woman Conference taking place online this year. Let's find out a little bit more about how it all began and what we have to offer you at the conference. Welcome to the Whole Woman 2020 Conference once again. I'm going to be telling you a little bit about myself. My name is Glory Olamide, as you already know. I am a UK trained secondary school teacher. I also have qualifications in psychology and MSc to be specific. My first qualifications were in mass communication where I got my BSc and first MSc and I specialized in public relations and advertising. I'm a Christian mindfulness practitioner. This enables me to work with clients to remove stressful situations from their lives. You know, mindfulness helps you to remove stress. So I practice that with clients who work with me. I am an author. I have authored three books so far, and they're all available on Amazon. Type my name, Glory Olamide, and the books I have authored will come up. 
I'm also a podcast host. I believe in using your voice to share your message, whatever message you have. And I'm a YouTuber. I upload various content on YouTube. Okay. My content is based on various topics ranging from mental health, freedom. I believe in freedom. You need to be free to be who God has called you to be. And we eliminate limiting beliefs, beliefs that hold you back from seeing that freedom which you already have. I also share content on relationships, discovering your purpose, fulfilling your dreams and passions. I share true life stories and discussions from experts. I bring experts on board in their field, stories that would inspire, propel and motivate my audience. My first event started or was done in the year 2013, where I um, organized and raised money, you know, raised awareness for a charity to help them on a mission trip. And that was my first event in 2013. It was titled Bollywood Fun Day because the mission trip was to India and we raised a lot of money for this organization. The whole woman conference, the first one was held in 2019. So there was a gap between my first event and my second one. So the first whole woman conference was in 2019 where we had um, over 50, just over 50 women in attendance. And we also had um, international speakers. There were a variety of stallholders, lots of entertainment. We had a mini fashion show and the women, the businesses, everyone got the chance to network with one another. And there was a lot of fun on the day, as well as lots of refreshments for everybody. Now, the whole Woman 2020 is going to be online. It's an online conference this year, as we all know, because of COVID-19. So it's going to be in July, but I think it is safer to still have it online because the disease is still around. There's a lot lined up as usual for this conference. We're going to be having stallholders. If you, are, if you have a business you want people to know about, do come, get yourself a ticket, book, book um, to come to the conference, and you will be, your business will be made known and seen by a whole lot of people in the audience. And we also need event sponsors. We also have international speakers. There's going to be meditation session, laughter, yoga, networking. You have the chance to network when you come with your business. You network with other business women as well. We will be having prophetic appointments, but you need to book on the website after payments before you can have that appointment because spaces are limited. We're going to be having music. And of course, you are going to be present as well. Right, your purpose, as mentioned earlier, I focus on helping people discover their God-given purpose. So do you feel like there's something you need to be doing? Do you sense a transition happening in your life, but can't seem to figure out how to find this purpose of yours on your own? The event facilitates a space to discover tools that we empower and help you get into what the next chapter of your life holds for you. So if you sense a transition or you feel that there's something you need to be doing but not quite sure, why don't you book a ticket and come and then that will be a roadmap, the start to so many things to your destiny, to you understanding what you're meant to be doing here on earth. My mission is to help women understand the identity and purpose in order to find fulfillment. When we see more women empowered, the impact is felt in her circle of influence, which will be felt tremendously in her family, work and other areas of life. The whole woman provides a nurturing environment for women to relax and feel refreshed. Okay, I believe in empowering women. The more women are empowered, the ripple effect will be felt 
everywhere she goes, she goes to, everyone she meets, the impact will be positive and it will be great because she's empowered and knows who she is. Freedom to be you, you are free to be you. That's the title of the conference this year. So the Whole Woman Conference is an event that covers various topics. That's why, that's why it's called the Whole Woman. We look at the spiritual, physical, mental, as well as the emotional aspects of the woman. You are meant to be whole. And for you to work and complete your assignment, you need to do that as a whole woman. Knowing who you are, knowing your identity, that's a great way to start. It is a conference that empowers ladies and provides an opportunity to network with like minds. It will be great to see you there. I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you so much. Tickets can be found on my website titled gloriousglowempowerment.com. All you have to do is go onto my website and then there's a link titled Get Your Ticket. That link takes you directly to this page where you find all the information about the event on the day. You will find the schedule. You are able to get your ticket and you are able to join in the conference because you'll be sent a link. The event is taking place on the 11th of July this year. Everything is possible when you believe and have faith. Come and find out more. It is titled Freedom to be you. We have exactly 42 days, 21 hours, 6 minutes and the seconds are ticking away as we speak to the event. It will be online as mentioned earlier and we start at 10.30 all the way to 4 p.m. I'm going to be telling you a bit more about the speakers what you see on the screen here is a snippet from last year's event, okay? You can go onto my website and click on the link and then you can play to find out more about what happened on the day. It is time to let go of the old and step into the new, okay? Now, also, it's a transformational event where lives are changed for the better. And these are some of the ladies that attended on the day. You can also read reviews on my website about how people felt about last year's event. Now, the speakers coming this year are trained and passionate event speakers. I'm going to be one of the speakers. And we have Ruth Moragas. She's one of the speakers as well. Sophia Pacifico Reese is one of the speakers as well as Annalie Redlin Hughes. I'll tell you a bit about each of these speakers. I have already told you, uh, given you some information about myself. Let's find out more about each of these speakers. So Ruth is the founder and co-director of Happy Heads, which is a mental health organization that seeks to educate, empower people who have been through mental health problems, okay? That, that's what Ruth does, and she's bringing her gifts on the day and speaking to us about different ways to find out who you are. Now, let's find out about Sophia, what she does. You can go onto my website to read all about Sophia, but she works with aspiring coaches, coaching entrepreneurs who feel ready to become their own boss fearlessly. So that's Sophia. That's a summary of what she does. That's only a section, a little bit of what she does. Go onto my website to read a bit more about Sophia and come to the event and you find out a whole lot more. Now, Annie has a driving passion for organic living and enjoys working with community organizations as well as churches. Her aim is to have a positive impact on our future generation. She's going to be talking to us about how to heal your body God's way, healing through God's pharmacy. So come on today to find out how you can 
heal yourself without putting harmful products or ingredients into your temple. All right. On my website, you will find the schedule of the day. Just click on there. Tickets are available on my website as well. So the attendees, the tickets to come in is 25 pounds. And what will you get with that? Normally it's 35 pounds, but because of COVID-19, we've had to reduce it because it's now online. You'd have the opportunity to network all day. You also get your Zoom conference ticket and you'll be added to a Facebook, Facebook group for the conference. Now, stallholders, your ticket is, to, is 30 pounds and you will get the opportunity to display your business name and contact information when you are speaking. You'll be given about two minutes to speak. Tell us about what you do. Your business name will be displayed. Your contact information will be displayed as well for anybody who wants to find out more about you and um, get your service or product. All right. Your business name will also be featured in my social media for one week after the event. And for every, every time I post, you will be tagged. We also get the Zoom conference ticket link and you will be added to the Facebook group for the conference as well. Now sponsors, we need sponsors for the event. And for sponsors, your ticket is 50 pounds. And what do you get? It's an opportunity for our sponsors to advertise their services at the event. Information about your business, your social media handles will be advertised as well. Okay. And you also get the opportunity to advertise in the chosen segment of the program where you like to be featured. You choose where you want to be, what time you like your business to be advertised. Okay. Indicate the segment you would like to sponsor and your business will show at various points in that segment. You will also get the Zoom conference ticket link. You will get two minutes where you talk about your business. You have the opportunity to share your information with a targeted audience and you will be added to a Facebook group for the conference as well. That's for the sponsors. So go onto my website and reserve your space if you'd like to be at the conference. As you can see, last year's event, you can see snippets from last year's event here on the page. Yes, we had a fashion show. We had opportunities to mingle, to chat and network with other businesses and a whole lot more. My website also makes it possible for you to book a discovery call with me. This discovery call is not for the conference, but to give yourself the gift of re reigniting your dreams and creating a purposeful and passionate life. I'm inviting you to book a complimentary chat with me and discover your true identity. Discover who you are, discover your assignment. Discover your purpose. There's no point leaving, sleeping, waking up and doing the same thing over and over again without truly fulfilling your purpose. The main reason why you are on earth. So that's my passion. My passion is to see you fulfill your God-given purpose. So if you feel you have been working and not really been, you know, doing what you are meant to be doing, then go onto my website book a call with me. It's a complimentary call. It's free. 15 minutes. We'll chat and find out. Do a roadmap and find out what your next chapter is. What is what it is you are meant to be doing really. Okay. So that's the information. Go to my website to find out more. Get your tickets. Yeah. Go to my website, get some more information, get your tickets, and it will be great to see you all there. I look forward to seeing you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Take care. God bless you. Bye. 
Hello and welcome to Glorious Glow Empowerment. My name is Glory Olamide. I work with, specifically with women and the whole woman experience is an event coming up in July. I'll be talking to us later about that, but for now I would like to talk to us about what I do as an identity and empowerment coach. I work specifically focusing on the whole woman, ensuring that the woman is whole, okay? That she is happy, she is satisfied, and she knows her purpose on earth. We all have a God-given assignment or purpose, and I work as a facilitator with women to ensure that they know what their God-given assignments are. As a woman, do you think you are here to get married, have children, keep the home, and that's it? What else? Why are you here? Do you think that's all you were created for? I think there is more. You have been created and you're on earth for this time. You are here this century for a purpose, for a reason. Are you fulfilling that purpose? If you are not, then it's time to take a deep dive and find out why you are here. That's why I focus mainly on three areas, okay? I work on the spiritual. I look at the spiritual, helping you to become self-aware, okay? Helping you to become connected to yourself. In the process, also helping you to become reconnected. That's if you have lost this connection, getting you reconnected to a higher being. Once you are connected to this higher being, it enables you to find out and know why you are here. It enables you to find out your purpose. And in the process, you become satisfied and you wake up every day with a spring in your step because you know it's another day to fulfill your assignment. It's another day to touch a life. We are all here to impact others. Are you being impactful at the moment? Do you think your life is just here to do the mundane? There is so much more to your life. And if you haven't found what your purpose is, I'm inviting you to come on board and let's find your purpose together. Okay, that's the first thing, the spiritual aspect. The second aspect I work with women is psychological, psychological and emotional aspect. We look at what's helping you, help you to get a positive state of emotions. What can you do? If you're not there at the moment, what are the steps you need to put in place? Okay, helping you to ensure you have life satisfaction. Okay, ensuring you have smart goals. Not, not having general goals that seem impossible to achieve, but ensuring your goals are smart and achievable. Measure, measurable goals that you can take little steps at a time towards making progress. Instead of standing still, you are making progress. Irrespective of how slow it is, you are making some progress, all right? So psychologically, we ensure you have a positive mental health. If you feel your mental health is not where it should be at the moment, what are the little things you can do, again, to help you achieve a positive state of health mentally, all right? Your personal growth, you know, little things, everything starts with a little step. Don't try to eat <laughs> an elephant all at once. It's not possible, okay? How do you eat an elephant? By taking one bite at a time. So I'm here as a facilitator to help you take one step at a time towards achieving your purpose. The next way I work with women is physical well-being. Not in terms of being um, putting you on a diet, no, <laughs> or making sure you are skinny. That's not what I do. Ensuring you are resting. Are you getting adequate rest? You go to bed, you sleep, but is your mind resting? Are you actually resting? Okay, ensuring you get adequate rest, you sleep well, you are um, keeping yourself healthy in any way you can. Okay, physically, doing something physically every day to ensure that you are maintaining this body that you have. This body is a gift and we, we, we must um, take care of it in 
any little way we can. 10 minutes a day of taking a walk down the road is something instead of being just being on the couch. So we just look at these three areas and ensuring the woman is whole, all right? So I have, like I said earlier, I have an event coming up in July and this event is called the Whole Woman Conference. At this, con I'll be sharing my screen now. At this conference, uh, let me share my screen first and I'll, yes. So this is my website, okay? And my tagline, as you can see, there is transforming women into confident leaders. All right. Now, here, let me move this a bit. And you can see my conference by clicking on the early bird ticket. This ensures you get the tickets at a reduced rate of £25. Okay. When you click on the early bird ticket, you can click on the link down there that says here, reserve your place and you get the ticket for 25 pounds. However, this goes up on the 31st of April, it goes up to 35 pounds. So do ensure you get your early bird ticket at 25 pounds now before it goes up, okay? Um, we also need stall holders. If you have a business, and you like other women, you want to network with other women, you want us to know what you do, yes, then you reserve your place here and book a stall for yourself. We also need sponsors of the conference. As a sponsor, you go onto the website and reserve your place as well. And you can read all about the benefits of each one on the website. These are pictures from the previous conference of 2019, all right, so some of the pictures up there. Yes, so I would like to see you at this conference later. And we have the speakers up here as well. To read about the speakers, please go onto my website, get as much information as you can about this conference, the speakers and everything, you'll find them all there. And we have testimonials as well from the previous event that was done in 2019. Okay, it's all on the website. And these are more pictures from last year's event as well. So ladies, I look forward, forward to seeing you on the 11th of July, 2020 at the Whole Woman Conference. It'll be great to see you there with all that you, you have to offer, all the goodness you have. There's so much to you, ladies. Now, I would like us to look at my Work With Me page. How can you work with me and how can I work with you? What is there for you? Let's go, let's scroll down a bit. Down here, I have um, a guide, a downloadable guide for you. It's, it's titled, Five Steps to Squashing All Limitations. To get this guide, what you need to do is type in your name here and your email in the next section and it gives you immediate access to this downloadable guide. And immediately you get five steps to helping you to squash all limitations. What is stopping you from achieving your purpose? You get this guide immediately and you can start working with this guide before you get a chance to work in with me. That's something you can have access to immediately. Okay, so what's your purpose? Have you discovered your purpose? Are you living the dream you had as a little girl or even the dream you have as a grown woman? If not, what's stopping you? Let's come together and eliminate all these limitations so you can live the dream, the God-given purpose you've been designed for. So I, I work with women in various um, ways. I have the one-to-one -one empowerment coaching package. Some people like to work privately. Okay, so this is for you if that's if you like to prefer the one to one. Work privately is just you and I. We take a deep dive into um, the goals, into we look at the steps of eliminating whatever it is, is that is hindering you and making sure you are able to achieve and fulfill your assignment. All right, and I, I have here as well the um, group package. 
Some people prefer to work with others to get feedback and all of that. And then if that's you, the group uh, package is um, for you. It's called Freedom to Dream Group Coaching. Okay, go onto my website and read more about it. I also have here something for um, business women. If you're a business woman and you feel, you know, you don't feel productive at the moment, you feel stressed out and all of that, and you want to reduce the stress that you're experiencing, okay, and you want to feel productive again, this is for you. You can do this on your own if you are on your own as a businesswoman, or if you like to involve members of your staff, you can all come on here and book your session, and I will walk through with you. And I use a tool, mindfulness is one of the tools I use here, okay, to help you ensure the stress is removed or is reduced or eliminated from your life. Okay, so go onto my website and go through, see what package is um, suitable for you and then book your discovery call. Okay, schedule your call. You get the first half an hour for free. Okay, where we work together and have a chat and see if you are a good fit, if we are a good fit for each other. And then once that's um, done, then we can now start your coaching session. It'd be nice to see you all book a session. It would also be nice to see you at my event in July. I, I'm looking forward to it and I hope to see you there as well. Any questions, go onto my website or you can email me at glory at gloriousblueempowerment.com and I'll get the email directly and I can um, respond immediately as well. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Take, take care and God bless. Bye. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Glory Olamide and I would say welcome to everyone who comes regularly. And if you are new here, welcome as well. And thanks to all who have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, do consider joining this family. Yes. Um, I'm here to discuss something very important that I think is important to everyone, um, which is about our purpose. You know, sometimes we think we have all the time to fulfill all our purpose. We have all the time to live our dreams, right? We have all the time to fulfill our passions and things like that. However, nobody, nobody actually knows when their time is up or do you know when your time is up on earth definitely not no one knows when their time is up so what is stopping you from actually fulfilling your dreams what's stopping you from fulfilling your passions are you looking at other people and saying oh what would they say you know what would people say what what would people think are you living your life by people's opinion or are you just going to go out there and live your dreams? What is that desire? What is that deep thing, that passion you have within you that you feel you really would love to do or achieve? But for some reason, maybe culture, your cultural heritage, or by culture, I'm a woman, I'm not meant to do this, excuse me. I can't do this, I can't do that because I'm a woman, excuse me, my phone is about to go off you know, um, or you feel your religion, what's your religion, you know, what's, why is it holding you back, you know, are you thinking about society, oh, in my society where I come from, you know, this is not allowed or that's not allowed, if you do this or that, it will be frowned upon, so for that reason, you, you feel, no, I'd leave it, you know, I'd leave it for another time, you know. How do you know you have another time? You know, how do you know you, you know, that time you are planning and hoping for, how do you know you are going to live up to that time? No one is saying anybody's going to die young. God has promised us many years, many years on earth, 70, 80, and all of that. However, that hasn't stopped people from dying. You know, yesterday I heard some news, terrible news about somebody who I know, I saw just last week, 
you know, she's gone. The person is gone. The person went yesterday morning. And it got me thinking about how people keep thinking they have all the time on earth. God has given us, um, everyone, an assignment. Just, be just before we are born, we are all equipped and given things to do to come into this world with. However, because of one thing or the other, you know, stress as we grow up, stress, you know, things happen in life, and we just seem to lose a sense of that purpose, you know, that God has given us, each and every one of us is in us, is within us, but life, you know, things happen, and we're like, oh, I can't be bothered, you know, to do this, I will just go with the flow, go with the crowd, everyone is doing this, I'm going to do that as well, you know, I'm told don't do this, I'm going to go by the rules, but we live under grace, we live under grace, this comes with a lot of responsibility, it doesn't mean because we live under grace, we shouldn't um, behave or do things accordingly. We live under the grace of God, and God has given us free will. You know, he has given us free will. Some people are waiting for a miracle, something to, a sign to fall from heaven, to say, oh, go and do this. This is your, this is what you should be doing. This, no, that there's nothing, it is finished. God has done everything. It's the work has been completed. You know, it's all done. It's complete. There's nothing else left to do. The only thing left to do now is for each and every one of us to get up and fulfill, find out, you know, find out what, what is it exactly? What am I meant to be doing? And when you discover it, you now start working it out bit by bit, step by step. Take each step at a time. You can't do everything at once. Take it step by step, each step at a time, and that will take you there. You can't, um, your journey needs to have a start, start, okay? You start from somewhere with the end in mind, with the end in mind, and then as you take that journey, you take steps towards that journey, there are people along the way to help you. There are people along the way to help you, you know, there are facilitators along the way because you may not know how or know what to do, where to start from. However, it's always best to start with something, to start somewhere instead of saying, I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to do any of this. I'm not going to be bothered about it. I'm just going to live life, you know, do the usual, go to work, come back have dinner, go to bed, wake up the next day and repeat the same process again. You know, I'm here to challenge you. I work specifically with women and I'm here to challenge you to dare to dream again. You can leave your purpose. There's nothing. And I repeat, there is nothing, absolutely nothing. No one can stop you from achieving your dreams. Once you have that in heart, in mind, just commit it to God and say, Lord, help me along the way. This is my, these are my plans. This is what I desire to do yeah, and all of that. Bring my helpers, bring helpers my way. However, don't stop there at praying. You have to put things in place, activities, you know, steps in place, make plans, make phone calls, have meetings, whatever it takes. To make sure your dreams come to pass, you must make sure you begin to do it. Um, a popular, there's a popular saying that, I think I heard this from Wayne Dyer, don't die with your music still in you. You have your music in you and you are too scared to play it because you're like, hmm, would that person like it? Is it to their taste? Why are you worried about if it's to anybody's taste? Just play your music. Just be you. Play your music. Don't die with your music still in you. And there's another saying, I think I heard this from, I can't, um, this purple, I can't remember his name now. 
but he said the graveyard is the richest place on earth because that, that's where you find most talents. Why? Because many people have left this world without. Hello again, my phone. <laughs> The recording just went for some reason. Anyway, we are back. So as I was saying, yes, I'm daring us to live our dreams, live our purposes, and fulfill our potential. All right? That's why I work as an um, empowerment coach. I help women discover their identity, discover who God has created them to be. What is that purpose God has given you? So I help, I help women identify their God-given talents and purpose and gifts and all of that, you know, and then help them map out ways, steps in which they can begin to fulfill, fulfill this desire or dreams they have in their hearts. We do this with, by seeking God with, God's, with God's help and then making sure you are working in the right direction for you, not, for, not to... Um, please anyone else, not to make other people happy. We make sure we are working according to God's plans for you. The God-given desire and purpose he's put in you, we are going to, you know, find it out and then make sure you are led and along the way to begin to fulfill, fulfill these dreams and desires, excuse me. That's why I work as an identity and empowerment coach. And I have a program coming up shortly. It's, going, it's coming up in July, on the 11th of July. And I have three other speakers coming up as well. Very good speakers, all some women, women that will be coming to talk to us. We're talking about various aspects of the woman, the whole woman, the physical aspect, spiritual aspect, and the emotional aspect. This is coming up on the 11th of July, and it will be great to see you there. We have the early bird, early bird ticket on sale now. I will be leaving the description box. I will be leaving the link in the description box, rather. After this video, you can click on the link to get your tickets. It will be great to see you all there, and I look forward to seeing you, and it will be nice to see everyone fulfilling their dreams. Remember you can do it. There's nothing stopping you from fulfilling your dreams because you have been created for a purpose. Till I come your way again, take care. God bless. Bye. Right. So, um hoping I'm live. Yes. So as you can see from the description of my live video, it says your dreams are possible. However, you need to get out of your own way to make your dreams a reality. Okay. Do you know who you are? If you do, what's stopping you from fulfilling your dreams? What's stopping you from, um, making the desires of your heart, the deep desires you have down there in your heart, what's stopping you from bringing them into reality? So that's what we're going to be discussing today. And I thought it would be a nice way to end my work day because I've been busy working most of today. And I thought before I end my day, I re retire for the evening. It would be nice to do this live video, just to talk about your dreams. What dreams do you have? Oftentimes, people think that their jobs, the titles they have, is what makes them who they are. You know, some people feel without a title, they are nothing. So I'm here to say, without your title, you really need to know deep down who you are. Because your title, you are not a title. You are not the holidays you are able to take in a year. That's before this lockdown came up. You are not the house you live in. Some people feel, you know, the home they live in makes them better than other people and things like that. However, 
how do you know who you are? Before you can live your dream, before you can fulfill your dream, you need to understand a major thing, and that is yourself. Okay? If you don't understand yourself, how would you begin to understand what your dreams are, what your passions are, and all of that? So it is very important. It is vital for you as an individual to first understand yourself. It's like saying you have a relationship with someone, but you, there's no understanding. So in this case, you need to have a relationship with yourself. You need to understand yourself, know who you are. Okay, so what are the things? How do you start? Where do you start from? How do you even begin to understand yourself? You know, if you are on this live video, I would like you to leave a comment and tell me what ways, if you have achieved this, you know, tell me what ways, how did you go about it? How did you begin to start on that journey of understanding yourself? Or do you just wake up every day and live on autopilot you do the same things every day before now you just carried on with the hustle and bustle of life you wake up go to work come back eat dinner go to bed and you repeat the same thing again the next day is that what life is about so my purpose my passion really is to help women especially i work with women mostly you know, I'm an empowerment coach. I help you understand your God-given identity because without understanding your God-given identity, it's almost impossible to fulfill your dreams. You see, it's, it's it becomes difficult. So how do you begin to um, have a, a good relationship with yourself? I'm sure some of you say relationship with myself. Yes, that is important. You must understand yourself. You must have an awesome relationship with yourself before you can even start to have a great relationship with other people. Because if you don't know what makes you happy, how can you come together with somebody else and find happiness? It means you are going to put the burden of you being happy on someone else, which is so unfair. So to know yourself, one thing you must do is to make sure you understand what makes you happy? What makes you happy? What is it that makes you wake up with a leap on your steps every single day? What makes you tick? That's the first thing you must discover. What makes you happy? What makes you look forward to each day? When you wake up, you're like, wow, it's a beautiful day. I'm happy. You know, what makes you set those goals? You need to take a journal and begin to no take a note of what makes you happy why are you happy what makes your heart beat you know not with the presence of someone else you on your own you need to discover what makes you happy why why am i happy on the road to fulfilling your dreams fulfilling your dream um, is like someone going on a journey it's like going on a journey and on this journey we are all on different um, stages of this journey some are ahead some are in the middle and some are still coming behind so on your journey you need to understand where you are on your journey so on this journey to fulfilling your dreams what makes you happy as you are working on this road to fulfilling your dreams what do you see along the way who do you meet things like that who do you meet who helps you and you need to know what doesn't help you as well all right so as you make your journey start making a note in your journal of what makes you happy all right happiness helps you express who you are okay you are able to express yourself better because you know who you are. So I'd like us to start doing that. Start making notes of this. And also, once you're happy, you'd have less conflict within you. You are not like, oh, unsure. You don't live life like somebody who is just being blown along the way 
by the wind or by people's opinion and things like that. You live life with confidence. You know who you are. You know what you're doing. You don't have constant inner conflict. You know, this conflict within you all the time of being unsure, being uncertain and all of that. If you are uncertain on a daily basis, how will you fulfill your dreams? It's going to be very tough. You know, it's going to be a very tough one. It's going to be impossible really to fulfill your dreams, to even begin to understand where to start from. You, you begin to wonder, you know, today you are here, tomorrow you are there. Somebody says, oh, there's this network marketing business. Oh, you are there. Oh, there's something else tomorrow. Oh, you are there. You are everywhere, you know, being unsure because you have this inner conflict. You're not sure. But when you become confident and you become certain of what you are doing, you will not have that resistance within you. The inner conflict would cease to stop because you are now confident and you now know what you're doing. You see, so the first thing, know what makes you happy. The second thing, know what gives you less resistance, you know, that um, doesn't give you inner conflict. And the third thing you need to know on the way to fulfilling your dreams, it enables you, you're also able to make better decisions. Okay, once you become happy, you don't have that inner conflict, you make better decisions because you are not... Um, uncertain anymore you, you you're now certain of what you want to do you know what you want to do you now put in goals um long-term goals mid-term goals short-term goals you now put goals in place and you you begin to take steps towards achieving them you now know what you need to do because you know yourself better you know what you like and you know what you do not like and things like that and this gives you the fourth thing which is self-control okay you know what motivates you and you know what doesn't motivate you so when you are motivated you're able to control yourself you have self-control and you don't um, try to be like other people you don't copy other people you're authentic authentic you know yourself you know what you should be doing you know, you are able to control yourself better and you're not blown here, there and the order by people, by um, society, by culture, by religion. OK, religion is different from relationship with God. OK, so let's make that distinction there. You're not blown by if society or what would people say? If I do this, what would they say? if i don't do this what's going to happen you become certain you become confident and this gives you better results you are able to make proper decisions you are able to take time out reflect make those uh, make those make those decisions pardon me and then which gives you a better vision you are able to visualize where you want to go you are able to have better goals and your dreams don't seem so far away anymore because you are writing things down. You know what makes you happy. You know what you are meant to be doing. You know what you are on earth for. You're not here to sleep, eat, wake up, repeat the same thing again the next day. So this makes you have a lot of vitality. You have pleasure. You, you do things confidently and all of that. So I thought it would be nice to come here and share these few tips with us today for those of us who are still unsure, not sure what to do, not sure what they are here for and just on autopilot. Now, the second thing you need to do, once you know who you are, these are just some tips, just a few tips. There are so many things, a whole lot more we need to do on the way to discovering who we are, our, our um, identity, you know, who God has called us to be, what our talents are, what our passions are. There are so many things to do to discover them, okay? Now, the second thing we must do is to get out of our heads. Those limitations, you know, those um, negative thoughts, those things that tell you, you cannot, I can't, 
I can't do this because, oh, I can't do that because maybe I'm a woman. Some say, oh, I'm a woman in my culture. Women are not meant to, to do this. Or in, my, in the society, this is frowned upon. Put yourself in a box. So I'm saying you need to get out of your heads. Remove those limiting beliefs. All right. They are called limiting beliefs and they will, they, they will limit you. Definitely limit you every time in everything you do. Okay. I put out a post yesterday about being um, at one point in my life extremely shy and all of that. And I would rather just sit down and observe others. I was very good, and I still am good at observing and making a note of things and absorbing things and just taking things in and all of that. And I had a passion growing up. That was to become a newscaster, <laughs> you know. However, while I was in university, I, I think in my second year, I decided, no, I wasn't going to become a newscaster anymore because in my third year, we were meant to choose our area of specialty and, you know, what you wanted to major in and all of that. And you could either do, because I studied mass communication as my first degree, so you could either do, you could either major in um, print, broadcasting, and the third one was public relations and advertising. When I went to university, my initial plan was to major in broadcasting because I wanted to be a newscaster, you know, read news and all of that on TV. However, I developed a stutter. So I thought there's no way I'm going to be reading the news with a stutter. So I changed direction and decided to do um, public relations and advertising, which I majored in in my first degree. And I quite enjoyed it because I learned a lot. And I packed. I just said, no, nope, no more broadcasting for me. And I forgot all about it. And that was a limitation. But I didn't know at the time. I just thought my nature, it's not in my nature to be a broadcaster. So I left that, you know. And then here I am. Now I do YouTube. I broadcast my own message. I have my own podcast. I'm a podcast host. And I do my Facebook lives and all of that. And the other day I was thinking and I, and I told myself, wow, life has just gone, you know, it has gone round and taken me back to where I started originally, you know where I wanted to be a newscaster, and I thought that was the end of it. I couldn't be a newscaster anymore. And here I am now broadcasting my own message, how life works, right? And I'm like, wow. So I could have majored in broadcasting then, but I thought, I can't do that. I have a stutter. <laughs> but that's not me. That was just a limiting belief. So my point in saying that story is this, whatever you think is holding you back, whatever your limitation is, it's just in the mind. There is nothing you cannot learn. There is nothing you cannot achieve. There's nothing you cannot do once those limiting beliefs, those limitations are taken out. Yes. So have I been cured of this stutter? No. Once in a while, it still happens, you know, once in a while, I still jumble up my words and things, but hey, that's me. I'm not letting that stop me. I'm not letting that prevent me from doing what I love to do. I love to create, I love to talk, I, like, I love to express myself and things like that. So I know who I am. I know who I've been created to be. My mission in life is to help other people get out of their heads get over limitations and achieve what they've been created to do in life and start this journey. If they haven't started already, start the journey of living and fulfilling their dreams. That's my purpose in life. So I help specifically women achieve this. And to get in touch with me, 
I have a website. It is gloriousglowempowerment.com. And if you are watching on my Facebook page, it's Glorious Glow Empowerment Coach. And my podcast is Glorious Glow Empowerment Podcasts. And um, yeah, my YouTube channel is Glorious Glow Empowerment. So what I do is I cover topics to help empower women in various areas of their lives. So to work with me one-to-one, I have that available if you would like to work with me one-to-one. At this time, there's um, a lot of people being stressed out because of what's happening, the lockdown and and things like that. So I have um, something I'm going to post here. I have shared a free one before. I think last week I shared a free kind of um, Christian meditation. And I'm going to attach something in the link here. If you would like to have some kind of meditation to calm you down, to take your mind away from this stressful situation, I'll drop the link in the description box. You can have access to it and listen to it and just relax and ask God to help you. So what I do is I studied psychology in the UK. So I use some strategies, you know, psychological strategies to help women. And I also put in Christian principles and values to help you become who God has created you to be. Because it would be a shame really to leave this world without fulfilling your purpose. Some of you may be familiar with the story of the um, talents. That story gets me all the time. The story of the talents where some were given one talent, two talents, five talents, and one of them hid his talent and he never did anything with it. Guess what? We are all going to give account one day. What would you say you did with your talents? It has to be multiplied. If you don't know how to um, say fulfill one of your passions, which may be what what passions do you have (laughs) singing you want to sing you can't sing you can go to singing lessons yeah make your talent even better and then nothing can stop you you can pay for some singing lessons you want to be what a dancer learn how to dance go to dance school watch videos talk to other people join groups Nothing should stop you from fulfilling your dreams. Nothing really. So whatever you want to achieve, all you have to do is put your mind to it and you can do it. So that's where I'll be ending my video today, my message today. And I hope um, it has impacted you in one way or the other. And I hope you found it helpful or useful. So to get in touch with me, You can contact me on my Facebook page or any of those um, websites I mentioned earlier. Whatever you do, take care. God bless. Bye. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Glory here from Glorious Glow Empowerment. This afternoon, I will be talking about faith you know some people call it quantum physics but i call it faith have you ever wondered why some people find you know some people just have everything they want they seem to have everything and you just wonder how why is it that some people just seem to have everything come to them as easily as anything while others seem to struggle Like I said earlier, some people call it, you know, the universe giving them and providing them all these things. But I believe in God and I believe that whatever we have faith, we put our faith on, would come to pass. The Bible says in, I'm going to be quoting a few scriptures here, that all things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible to them that believe, which means to get what you want, all you have to do is believe. You know, that's in Mark chapter 9, verse 23. And in Habakkuk um, chapter 2, verse 2, it says, write the vision down and make it plain. 
write the vision down and make it plain. Also, the Bible also says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Ask and you will receive. Why? Why will you receive? You receive because God wants your joy to be full. And then Genesis um, eleven six says, nothing that you have, nothing that they have a mind to do will be impossible for them. You know, anything you set your mind on will be possible for you. You know, there's nothing you set your mind on that will be impossible. That's what the Bible says. Also, when you pray, believe and you will have it. When you pray, believe and you will have it. So what's the problem here? One thing I have observed is people find it difficult. You know, we confess these things. Oh, yes, I believe. Sorry, it's a bit it's cold here. So <laughs> I've put on my um, subtle neck kind of top. Yeah. So why is it difficult to act on these things? You know, we seem to have the head knowledge. But has it become heart knowledge yet? So how can you transfer what you know? You read this every day. You jump about. You confess it and all of that. Okay, you do what everyone seems to be doing. You know, you are believing, you are reading what the word says. Well, why is it not manifesting in your life? What's the problem? The Bible has told us to believe, have faith. So why is it not manifesting? Why are you not seeing it come to life? Why are you not seeing it? Or why is there a delay? You know, now lack of faith when you don't have faith or when you worry about something you have prayed about something you have asked for you know some people say the universe gives them stuff you know i i say god gives me the things i need so when you pray do you spend all night you know tossing and turning around on your bed because you are wondering how is this ever going to happen how is this going to manifest in my life if you do that, then you are putting a hold. You've just put a plug on the prayer you said earlier. You've just, you know, removed the faith you had. Now, we don't need so much faith to get what we need. The Bible says all you need is your faith as a mustard seed. You know, faith like a mustard seed. Once you have that, that's it. That's all you need. And then whatever you are hoping and wishing to get, will definitely come to pass. Now, I'm going to show you, um, I believe in journaling. I write a lot. So this is one, oh, one journal that I have. That's one. And this is another one. This one says, if you can see, nothing is impossible. This one says, nothing is impossible. So I have this one as well. Yeah, it's just a plain one. This is a plain one that I use. So this one, I've been using this since, um, let's see, 20, let's see, 2015 or 2016 thereabouts. I've been using this one since then. I have my plans, you know, in this one and this one nothing is impossible my dreams everything i really want to happen that i really i'm really believing my vision everything is in this one and then this one i just use as a daily journal everything just anything that happens daily goes into this now in this journal I wrote a few things in this journal. Things like, I am a confident speaker. Things like, I'm an author. Things like, um, what else did I write? I wrote so many things in there in, I think, 2015, since I started using that journal. And to be honest with you, <laughs> when I wrote those things down, I... I don't know. Like I said in my in my previous video, I used to be a very quiet, shy person, honestly. 
very much so extremely so and i was i would rather be seen and not heard i just like to sit down quietly and everybody just get on with your stuff whatever you're doing leave me alone kind of person you know and i within me i was a high achiever a go-getter and everything but i just didn't want to be disturbed by anyone but i had this desire that i wanted to do my dreams i wanted to do this and that so i wrote them down remember earlier i i read something to you from habakkuk 2 2 that's habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 it says write the vision and make it plain you know and when i wrote those things down in my journal i wrote scriptures i wrote bible verses beside what i want wanted or what i was hoping for i wrote bible verses beside them and to be honest i wrote them wrote all these things and totally forgot about them i never worried never thought about them but each, every, every time i remembered i thanked god for them now fast forward to 2019 <laughs> um I'm telling you, all those things I wrote down are beginning to manifest. Now I have authored three books. And if you had asked me then when I wrote it down, I wouldn't have thought, mm, I, it was just a desire I had, but I wouldn't have thought that I would actually, I don't know. I had faith, but somehow, I don't know how, I don't know how to explain this, but this year, the desire to write just took over. And I've just been writing, 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 writing. I've written three books and I have more to publish. You know, I've written and published three. I've written three books and I've published two. One is about to be published, you know, to be published shortly. And if anyone had, had asked me, I'm like, no, nope. you know, and this year as well, I had my first event. You know, I had an event where I was a speaker, I spoke and all of that to about 50 women in attendance to my program called the Whole Woman Event. You know, and people attended, lots of women, and I stood on the stage and I spoke to these women, you know. And if anyone had told me when I wrote this down in 2015 or 2016, I wouldn't have, you know, thought it's possible even. That I'll do that. But what I'm trying to say here is the power of faith, the power of believing, the power of writing your vision down. You know, it's important. Write your vision. You have something you want, you have something you desire, something you really want, and you know, your dreams, your purpose, your vision, and all of that that you really want to happen to manifest in your life. Write it down. Take a pen, get yourself a journal write it down you know and if you're a christian write get the um, bible verses that match what it is you desire and write it beside it if you're not a christian you can write it down as well because these are principles that work for anyone have you ever wondered why some people even though you know they have no faith but they are doing extremely well because they understand these principles. They're just principles that work for anyone. You know, they are universal principles. That's why some people say the universe. You know, if, you're, if you believe in the universe providing you with this, that's fine. You know, write your vision down and then what you want to happen. And the way you write it down, don't say, I will be. Don't say, I will. Um, no, say, I have. I am. If it's better health that you want, I am healthy. If it's, you know, whatever it is you desire, whatever it is you want, just write it down. Say, I am. Use the present tense. That's why in the Bible, when Moses said, who the, you know, when God was asked his, his name, you know, the um, story of Moses and all of that, he said, I am. You know, I am. He is in the present now. Whatever you want, write it down as if you already have it. And you will definitely get it. Now, the other Bible verse I, I read um, was on ask. Okay, sorry, my camera is all over the place. 
ask and you receive that your joy may be full now you have all these desires and everything if you don't ask do you think you're going to receive it no it's like a parent you know your child wants something and they're in their room hoping that you will just know and give it to you give it to them you know but they, you won't you will just be you carry on doing what it what it was you were busy with you know but when your child comes and says mom dad i really need this you know you and you say okay you you may ask questions and things but you end up giving it to them anyway that's why god god is god he can give us anything we want but he wants that relationship he wants the relationship that's why he says ask ask when you ask he will give it to you so ask very important number one and then once you have asked write it down remember to ask in the present i am using the i am using i have these are very important principles that i have <laughs> known for many years and i put into practice and i'm seeing the manifestation of these things come to pass you know i'm not saying i've arrived i'm not saying i'm there yet but i'm still on my way i'm getting there and i'm seeing the one whatever i have written down already i've seen it come to pass i still have more um dreams you know desires and things that i really want to manifest and we are still on the journey we are as long as we are on earth we are all on this journey so i thought to come on here and share this with my youtube family just you know some of you may know this already if you know this already and you are practicing it and you are using it and it's working for you leave a comment in the comment section let me know how it's going for you and if this is new to you leave a comment as well let me know when you are going to start you know and let's all also let us know the results you get afterwards the most important thing is to have faith it, it, as little as possible mustard seed how big is mustard seed have faith number two ask what you want number three what write it down write it down write the date you want it to happen by write um it in the present tense don't say i will say i am and all of that and then we're going to live life we're going to be creating the life we want not allowing life toss us anywhere life wants to toss us to no take control create the life that you want and live in abundance right till i come your way again this is glory olamide coming on to say have a good life enjoy whatever it is you are doing wherever you are stay blessed and please if you haven't subscribed subscribe to my video if you haven't um clicked on the notification notification bell do, do do click on it and welcome to the family thank you bye stay blessed my books are on amazon i have kindle version and i have the um, paperback as well i would leave in the description box and um, the links to get to my books i have one on how to help your your child become an effective student at school how to, how to help them you know be, become an outstanding student at school and i have another one as well i have two more which when you go onto the link you will find two are already published and one is on its way if you type my name into um, amazon type glory olamide all the books i have authored will come up do patronize me some of the kindle versions you can read for free if you are in if you have a kindle um registration you can read some of my books for free otherwise you have to pay um, if you have kindle unlimited it gives you access to lots of free um, kindles and you can read and please once you've read it do leave a review let me know what you think about the books i've written thank you and everything you do stay blessed thanks bye So Welcome, so Sean, to Glorious Glow Empowerment Channel. It's good to have Hallelujah. you here. <laughs> We're going to have a wonderful time of fellowship. Yes, we are. So can you tell us a bit about yourself, what you do, and what your passions are, where you live as well? Sure. 
Uh, my name is Sean Duvall and I live in a small town in Bradenton, Florida. Florida. Most of you might know what Florida is because that's the home of Disney World. And yeah. uh, um, so that's a very uh, well-known tourist attraction spot. It is. And I, I live about two miles, two, uh, not two miles, two hours uh, from that time. From that. And uh, my caption is the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith. In fact, I'd like to show you uh, this one handy <laughs> shirt that I have. Torah, weapon of mass destruction. Wow. <laughs> Torah is funny because Torah means teaching and instruction in Hebrew. That's what it means. Okay. But most people understand Torah as the first five books of the Bible. Yes. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But if you take it in its literal sense, Torah, uh, Torah goes from Genesis all the way to Revelation, because all of that is God's teaching and instruction, right? Yes. Because all scripture is profitable, all good for doctrine, reproof, and edifying, right? Mm -hmm. So in its, in its, in its um, original sense, the Torah is the complete Bible, but most people know it as the first five books. It's, yeah, that's you are right. So what I do on my channel, this channel is about empowering people and okay. ensuring ensuring that their lives glorify God, you know, and encouraging them to follow their passions. Hallelujah. So tell us about your passion and how you discovered this. So um, back in two thousand, I was attending this uh, church. In locally, Church of the Cross, and there was uh, there was a lady that was uh, having a class during the week called the Prophecy Class. Okay. And she was showing videos like um, uh, people like Joan Vancouvering, uh, Perry Stone, um, God's News Behind the News, and stuff like that. Those are pretty popular here in the states. At least they were then. And uh, Perry Stone actually has a show on TV called Manifest. And yes, uh, I've seen that. Yeah. Seen that. yeah. So, um, so one of his good friends and um, researchers named Bill Cloud uh, would often appear and guest appear on, on Bill Cloud on uh, Perry Stone's uh, programming. And he would always be at the Prophecy Conference, which was usually held in Florida. Mm -hmm. Tampa, Tampa, Florida. But in, in any event, the, the woman who was uh, teaching these cops, her name is Dee, and, um, and then she started to explore the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And so she started sharing some of that with me, and it just witnessed to my soul, just like that. The, wow. You know, mm. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Would you agree? Uh, uh, the grass fades, the flower withers, but the word of the Lord stands forever, right? Yes. And in the beginning was the what? No, was the, the word. And right? the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Yes. And the word became flesh. But did you know there's a parable of the sower, where Jesus is going out with his disciples and he's teaching about these parables. One's about the parables of the sower that fell on different types of soil, soil and yes. the one's about the sower of the wheat and the tares, mm -hmm. right? In Luke 11, he's talking about the sower, uh, the seed is the word of God, right? Yes. So if the seed is the word of God, right? And mm -hmm. the word of God, we know to be Jesus. Jesus, Yeshua, yes, right? yeah. There is a spiritual principle found in Genesis 1, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about the seed shall produce after its kind. Kind, right? yes. And on day three, uh, which is funny because on day three, uh, there was no land, there was no vegetation, and just suddenly out of nowhere, you could say from death, the land appeared and life began. Life, yeah. Right? So right in the very beginning of Genesis, we see the shadow and the pattern of resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. came from nothing. Life came from death. 
right? Right out of Genesis 3. In the seed, and we know who the seed is, right? Because yeah. Genesis 3 goes on to talk about that, that um, there's going to be enmity with God's seed and Hasatan's seed, right? And he shall bruise your heel, but he will crush your head, right? Good. Yeah. And so, uh, so the seed will produce after its kind. And it's funny because if you had a watermelon seed back in the days of uh, Adam and Eve, that yeah. seed would still be a watermelon, watermelon. seed. Yeah. Today, right? It's not yeah. going to be an orange seed. It's not going to be a pear seed or an apple seed, right? It's no. still going to be the same seed. So if the seed mm. in Hebrew says Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, Today and forever. forever, and the seed is the word. Hello, are you picking this up? The wow. seed is not going to change. No, it does not change. Right? No, it doesn't. That's awesome. Uh, wow. So, um, so, anyways, I started getting into that in, in about 2000. Um, but you know, in my life, I don't know. If, uh, you, you had sent a bunch of questionnaires, and I don't know if you wanted to go off on that or. If what can you, I'm good either way you want to go. Okay, okay. So you found your passion that way, but then so many things happen, has happened along the way. So can you just go back a bit, retrace your steps, you know, and yeah. tell us when you first got to know God? Mm, yes, okay. You know, and then what happened sure. along the way? So, all right, so I was a rebellious kid when I was younger. And my neighbors were uh, born again Christians, attended a, uh, I guess, um, they would be considered Pentecostal, Church of God. They, they attended yeah. Church of God. And I was having this party and I was out in the middle of the street and I was hooping it up and cussing. And the neighbor comes out and goes, Sean, I am so disappointed in you. I got kids sleeping in the, and you know, I just, I mean, he convicted me. The Holy Spirit, through his words, just convicted me right there mm. on the spot. Mm. And uh, uh, so I went back in, turned down, and about, I don't know, I would say three to six weeks later, it's mm -hmm. been um, 50, and that was when I was 18, I go knocking on his door. I was like, yeah, hey, can I go to church with you? And oh. his surprise was like, wow. So the Lord had been pulling on my heart since then. Um, and so uh, not too long after that, you know, I was going to the church. I was worshiping for a couple of years, uh, but fell away, you know, back mm. um, Got in with the wrong crowd, experimented with drugs and alcohol. Mm. Uh, just went wayward. I mean, wayward in wow. the sense that I, I took a club, I uh, took a job in Arizona working at an adult club and, and, um, and then for three years did that and, and saw so much at first, it was, you know. Were you 18 at this point? Were you 18 years old at the time? No, now we're looking at 23, 25. 23, okay. I was a black belt martial arts, like did security work. Um, and so I, and so in any event, um, took this job and, and and I started going, fulfilling my own selfish desires, forgetting God, leaving him like sheep, all mm -hmm. turned away. Um, even though I made a perusal, uh, confession of faith, which I believe was a seed that was implanted uh, in me. But I, I fell away and I experimented with drugs and alcohol. And I don't want to glorify that uh, no. in, in any sense. But it was a struggle. That, that struggle held on to me for 30 years, probably. Mm. 30 years, off and on, off and on, off and on. But the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob never let me go. Mm -hmm. Never stopped uh, pursuing me. Uh, mm -hmm. Allowed me to suffer consequences that I, I deserved. Actually, yeah. I deserved the consequences, but mm -hmm. it uh, it took a long time to help me get out of the state of denial, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and take ownership and responsibility. It was always somebody else's fault. It was always, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it was always uh, it was 
you know, because of my wife and my ex wife, mm. it was because of my this, it was because of my daughter, it was because of X, Y, Z. Yeah. But never Shawnee D, if you will. You know, it was always because of somebody else and what somebody else did. And then in 2006, I went to a place called Dunklin Memorial Camp, which mm -hmm. is a faith based um, recovery center. Mm -hmm. And this place is a 10 month program where um, where you don't have any phones, you don't have any newspapers, you don't have any TV, mm -hmm. and it's, it, you work in this environment. They do what's called sociograms. Are you familiar with what that might that is? Sociograms. Yeah, it's really interesting. So can you explain? explain Wait, before you explain sociograms, can I take you a back a bit, just a little bit? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so you were. 18 got into drugs and all that but before then you went to church right well you when knew I was about 18, god I went to church. yeah and then around 23 24 25 in that area is when i started experimenting with drugs and alcohol okay so having known god for some time and then falling into drugs and alcohol yeah what happened what could have caused that do you know um <laughs> well, I think it was because of the normal male um, hormones where I was chasing love, probably. Mm. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Right. Mm. And so, so that, in that instance, I mean, you can attribute, if you want to go back, you can attribute it to uh, my, my, fam my family life when I was growing up. Right. I, I have five brothers and three sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my, my, my younger brother, God rest his soul, um, um, and I were the only ones that had the same father and mother. Right, okay. All my other brothers and sisters, we either had the same father or the same mother. Right. So um, what Dunklin actually taught me is that I was competing for attention with all mm. these other, with all these uh, other uh, siblings, right? And then, um, and then, so I was always trying to. My self worth was always trying to be good enough, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but because of a fractured relationship with my father, mm. uh, it, it never really solidified to be a healthy um, relationship relationship yeah yeah so it wasn't abusive uh, in, in a sense i mean unless you call time emotional neglect or you know mm -hmm. but it wasn't any kind of that abuse it's, in fact i had a pretty good life as a kid uh, mm -hmm. we had um we grew up in a, a rural neighborhood in okay. a small town in new hampshire uh we had one of the few homes that had a pool mm -hmm. um but my parents wow. weren't, I know, we weren't <laughs> rich by any means. Uh, they struggled to meet the bills and they, my mother worked two jobs. You okay. Know, they, my father was a carpenter. Mm. For the city, Were you a so. Christian family? Did you go to church as a family? No, we did not. I was okay. not raised as a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I was not raised as a Christian. So I still had a lot of the worldly pull mm -hmm. uh, in my life. And it just took a long time to knock that pull up. Right. And, uh, um, so, so then, you know, going, you know, maybe this church thing is new. Maybe it's like the, uh, the seed that uh, first hears the word and swings up with joy, but the cares of this world, cares you know, of the world, yeah. Chuck it out, you know. Mm -hmm, and so I just mm -hmm. went, I went back into the South, you know, went back to my old ways and, Plus, you know, growing up non-Christian, I had best friends to this day. Two best friends that uh, were not Christians, but I am. That was yeah. another struggle as a Christian. You know, they were like, Sean, what are you doing? I, are we going to hell now? Is that what it is? You know, <laughs> are you judging us me, now? <laughs> yeah. faith, you know, not knowing the word and not understanding things, but that's the beauty of the spirit. You know what I mean? That's, mm. that's, what, that's what God did when he took Israel out of Egypt. Each, yep. you know, he saved them first and then brought them to Mount Sinai mm -hmm. to give them the teachings and instructions where they said, 
all we have heard, we will do, right? Yeah. That, isn't that what we do when I admire and we're like, Lord, save me, Jesus, save me. I, I surrender to your, uh, your will. To your will. Yeah. All you say, I will do. Not even knowing what's. What's ahead. that stick? <laughs> what? what? You mean I can't? I can't do that. What? What? You know. So, so that, you know, so that's how I grew up. That's then. That's when I got convicted at eighteen, not being churched. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Not being growing up in church, mm -hmm. uh, unless you call going walking to uh, catechism school for the Catholics. Yeah. Uh, uphill in the snow, barefoot both ways. You know, really? No, no. It's a it's a saying that we say in, in <laughs> New England because the weather's usually cold. It snows a lot. And our parents would give us these sob stories like, when I was your age, I would go to church in the snow with oh, no right. shoes on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's an, a very interesting story. So at 18, you got to know God and everything, but you still went, you know, south, got into drugs and all of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So at what stage did you re realize that you had to give up those drugs? Well, it was actually a constant struggle through uh, all the way up to 2018. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, I wasn't doing drugs, but I was still drinking. I was still, still in denial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was still drinking. I was still in denial. And uh, I got a DUI. I'm not proud of that. Not, you know, a DUI here is uh, drinking under the influence. Influence, or driving yeah. The influence. Driving, yeah. Driving under the influence. So it was really a wake-up call, not just for me, but also for my wife. You know what I'm saying? Be, you know, at first we thought, yeah, you can't have one or two here. And it's not. Mm. But that one or two became, there's a saying in, in the uh, rooms of NA and A, so it's one is too many and a thousand is never enough. So, so that's my that's my story. One is too many, thousands don't enough. Mm. Just, once I start, I don't have the ability to stop. To stop, yeah. Uh, where my wife can have one glass of wine and be fine with it. You know? mm -hmm. In fact, she can have she can pour herself a glass of wine, and it cannot be finished. You know, where <laughs> I would have to, I would be like, what? That that wasn't my story. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got a DUI, and the funny thing is, I was. When I got into the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith, it caused even more of a divide because mm. it was going upstream to mainstream Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, it had challenged some of the, it challenged some of its <clears throat> foundational um, practices mm -hmm. and started getting back to the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith and what the apostles did in the first century. Yeah. And so I would you know, my pastor, my church members, uh, people I would go with, would, it, it, they would, not that they had to embrace it, but they almost pushed me out, if you will. Oh. Um, yeah. They almost pushed me out. Um, it created a very decisive wedge in my marriage. But mm. I still had a lot of those characteristics in me. Couple and then fuel the fire with some new revelation, new understanding, and then misinterpreting uh, old understandings uh, of what the Bible means when it says means, that the yeah. husband's the head of the wife, and, you know, have mm. those old like see, you will do what I say. Submit. Go to this direction. <laughs> yeah. It, it was. You know, it was uh, it was a perfect storm, if you will. It was a mm -hmm. natural, natural cause of of uh, woes and disasters, and it was. And so, for the next eighteen years, I would struggle with finding again my my need for attention, if you will, my spot in the place where going back to my dad, and mm -hmm. that I had to fight for the attention where I knew what I understood was. From God Correct. And, the spirit yeah. and, and right in the word, 
but nobody else knew it. I felt alone in the, in the desert. Yeah, so, yeah. So there seems to be a pattern here. So having come out of that, you know, yeah. before you came out, what helped you? Did you have a community of um, people at church? What yeah, actually in fact, helped you? Because parents listening to this or anyone going through this would want to know how someone who knew Jesus fell into that and then sure. how you came out of it. Who helped yeah, you? Yeah, so uh, I can't let me up here. Let me see. Well, I was hoping this would let me put up my virtual background, but I guess not. Reason, oh, your background is fine. I like that. Yeah, but I was going to show you a picture of uh, some of the guys that um, that I, uh, oh, well, anyways. Oh, mm. okay. I guess I'll take that. So, anyways, I apologize for that. So, I, no, it's all right. Um, I have a picture of some of the guys that I was going to this Bible study, right, since 2012 at, at a local coffee shop. I don't know if I can name your name, if you know, this on YouTube or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but but um, it was a local, well-known coffee shop. Um, I don't want to say it had stars in the sky, but you could understand it. <laughs> yeah, I know what you right? mean. Yeah. So, so uh, it's funny because I went in there and I was going to get coffee and there see this bunch of men, pretty much about eight, Eight, about six to, to eight men that were sitting in the middle of Starbucks having a Bible study, discussing the Bible. Really? Uh, That's we're good. We're at a general age between 50 and 87, right? And so they were mature men who've been through life and weathered uh, really like a, it was, now I look back on it, it was a great fertile ground that God planted me in for a mentor to be yeah. mentored. Mm -hmm. And so um, and so I started, I met them in 2012, and I saw them and said, hey, you having a Bible study? I'm like, yeah. I said, well, do you mind if I join you? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, so I partake in Bible study. Now, for the first <laughs> four or five years, I would go uh, when I could, depending on what my job allowed me yeah. to do, and it was usually maybe no more than four or five times a year. Mm. Uh, then in about 2017, I was pretty consistent every Friday morning. We all okay. meet there. Mm. Um, but I was still drinking. Mm. I was still drinking. 2018 is when I got my DUI. Mm. And then I got it on a Thursday. I got it on a Sunday. No, it was April. April. It was April eleventh, actually, when I when I uh, got the DUI mm -hmm. of two thousand eighteen. So when I went back to the Bible study, um, they already knew because the table next door was uh, sat the what here we um, we have a uh, Democratic system of Republicans and Democrats on the rules. So it was right. most of the people of the Republican Party, a, a group of guys from the Republican Party would come in at the same time that we did. And, um, and then they would sit in the table next door and talk about their stuff. And one of them right. was a lawyer. So he okay. said, hey, isn't this the guy that comes to your Bible study? <laughs> so they, <laughs> really? they already knew, but I had told them uh, with the, my head hanging low, full of guilt and shame, um, and then they just came up alongside me, you know, they nurtured me, uh, mm. they spoke into my life, they, mm -hmm. uh, held, hold me accountable. Yeah. Um, and so I really started the restoration. He's like, Sean, you know, we all fall. We all have our faults. And, uh, continue to walk in. So I actually had to be on house arrest for four months. So I couldn't go to Starbucks. Mm. So they came to my house. Oh. They came, all of them came to my house for four months on Fridays to, uh, to continue the Bible study. Bible study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I love your story. It shows the importance of mentorship, spiritual mentorship. Amen. Yeah. And it also shows that God welcomes us just as we are. 
That's you don't right. have to go clean yourself up first. Come on. You know, and say, oh, I can't go to church. I'm a sinner. I'm too deep in sin. Mm. You know, as deep as you are, he wants you to come submit yourself to him. You yeah. know, because that's what the devil wants. He wants to keep you in a corner thinking yes. you are the worst sinner. Come on. You know? And he wants to hold you there and keep as many people there. You know, but Jesus yeah. has already won the prize by dying for us and shedding his blood. He has That's cleaned, true. he has clean, cleaned us all. We are holy. He is holy, yes. so we are holy. Yes. He is righteous, so we are righteous. Yes. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All he wants is for holy. Lord, here I am, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Wonderful. all of you, the good and the bad. The good and the bad. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and one thing I have realized is that when you are filled with condemnation, shame, guilt, and all of that, your glory will not be seen by others. Mm -hmm. That's right. Somebody out there is waiting for you to walk in your glory, right? That's right. And that will help them come into their own glory. Yeah. You know? You're breaking up a little bit here, but yeah. Oh, when someone sees you walking in your glory, mm -hmm. that will help them come into their own glory as well. Did you yeah. get that? Yeah. Yeah. When so the seed. Sees you walking the glory that God is giving you. That will help them come into their glory as well. Yeah. I think the scripture says that we are to comfort those in the comfort in which we've been comforted with. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. definitely when they see that and they see that hope and they see that light and they see that shine, even among, even amidst all the trials and tribulations, the failures and the disappointments, the regrets yeah. and, the, and the shame, you can walk out. And you have that clothe of righteousness. I'm, mm -hmm. I hear you. Absolutely. You can, walk mm -hmm. in, you, you can walk in joy. You can walk in peace. And you, you can hold your head up knowing that it's not my righteousness that redeems me. It's but not. the Lord on high who paid it all. Definitely. Past, of course. <laughs> present and future. Yeah. Yeah. So what I see in your story is that the man in the in the coffee shop in starbucks that was a divine setup <laughs> amen amen <laughs> you know i agree yeah it was a divine setup god was with you all the way he, ne he never left you amen. you know he never, never left you so tell us how you came into studying jewish roots so uh back in you know there's a lot because of time you know uh, yeah and go through everything. But back in 2000, I was married uh, to my first wife. Mm -hmm. And um, I only had two. No, that <laughs> my first, my current, my yeah. first wife. And no um, judging. Don't worry. We're not judging anyone. <laughs> well, viewers may want to know. But um, <clears throat> so the, and I appreciate that. Thank you. That's my, all right. uh, I, we were married in, the pastor had asked me to host a young adult group at that point. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. So um, we were having uh, Bible studies at our home with young adults. And then it was around the time of Passover. And it was, I was curious as to what was going on. And my friend D, who I was telling about the prophecy box, yeah was speaking a little bit about this thing called the Hebrew roots or the Messianic uh, movement of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And so um, I called up local synagogues to see if they'd come and share Passover as they understood it mm -hmm. to a Christian group. And right. no one wanted to do it. <clears throat> so I kept on persisting and I got one synagogue that came over to do it. Mm. And wow, unbelievable. It just, um, this, they happened to be a Messianic synagogue, mm. which was just, it blew me away the significance of how the Hebrew roots actually show us the mm. life, death, resurrection, and the second coming, and the bride of Christ, 
uh, in the marriage supper of the Lamb, in all the things that we see in the Bible, we don't understand because we think of it over here from a Western mindset. Mm -hmm. We don't see it from a Hebraic mindset. Right. In other words, Hebrew has idioms like American, like English has idioms. You know, it's raining cats and dogs. He's driving like a bat out of the heat. You double know? mm -hmm. uh, You know, I got a frog in my throat. You know, those are all idioms we have, but Hebrew has the same idioms implanted in the word that we gloss over. Really? We don't, I can, I can, we don't recognize those idioms. So when he was teaching us about Passover, he came to, um, he came to a, the part called, uh, in the Passover Seder, about the unleavened bread. Now, this unleavened bread, have you ever seen matzah before? No. Matzah is, is bread that's baked, that's dry. It's mm. uh, poked with holes, and it's, when it's baked, it has stripes on it, right? Really? Yeah, I haven't seen that this, before. <laughs> I might have some here. Let me see if I can okay. walk over to my kitchen here. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to see some. There we go. I got my little... Uh, my little plaque here says Yod Hey Vav Hey. Oh wow! What does that mean? Uh, that's Yahweh in Hebrew. Okay. I don't anywhere in our matzo bread. Too bad. No. Okay. I thought I might have had some leftover from Passover, but I don't. Oh, you don't. Maybe I'll not. check YouTube later to see or Google something. Yeah, you can Google it. Yeah. And uh, basically, Mark's, when you look at it, uh, it would have been nice to have. I could have shown you again, I guess. But this matzo bread, mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, right? Yeah. This matzo bread that's striped and pierced and bruised is put into this uh, what they call uh, uh, a matzotosh or a, a unity bag. And this unity bag has three compartments. Okay. And you put three pieces of bread into the compartment and you take the middle piece out of the compartment mm -hmm. and you break it. Mm -hmm. And then you take the broken piece and you wrap it in linen. Hello, somebody. Mm. You hide it so that, so that the children have to go find it, right? Oh, and you okay. hide it you hide it usually, usually under a pillow, which in Hebrew they call stone, right? Mm. And then when they remove the stone and they find this matzo bread, they mm -hmm. have, and it gets unwrapped, they get a reward. Well, just wow. like Jesus was broken and bruised and pierced for our transgressions, mm -hmm. he died and he was wrapped in a linen. He was put into a tomb mm -hmm. where the stone was rolled away. And when wow. the disciples went to go find it, they received a reward of joy unspeakable. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So when the child brings that, brings that matzo back to the father, he negotiates the father a price to be paid for that. And the father will go, okay, here, I'm going to give you this dollar or five dollars with a promise that there's more to come later. Wow. Well, when Jesus, Jesus came to us, he said, hey, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit with the promise, hello, somebody, there's yeah. more to come later, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in Passover, which is unique because Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is, who yeah. died on Passover. He was in the grave during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. He rose on the Feast of first fruits. Mm -hmm. He was with his disciples for 40 days and 40 nights, speaking to them, about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And then it said, wait here for the promise. Yeah. And then on Pentecost, which is also called in Hebrew, the feast of Shavuot, the Holy Spirit descended upon the same day that the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. When thundering and lightning and fire was on Mount Sinai, tons of fire, clothed with fires was on top of the disciples. Hello, somebody. Mm. Right? And then, <laughs> so if the if the if the first four feasts talk about the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the giving of the Holy Spirit, 
we still got the Feast of Trumpets and Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Feast of Trumpets, I heard something in the Bible saying he's going to come with a great shout, like the last trump, hello, right? Yeah. And then five days later, the, 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 uh, the Day of Atonement, if you're saved, or the Day of Judgment, if you're not, right, mm-hmm, it's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, then se- and then seven days later, you have the Feast of Tabernacles, or as, as it's called, the wedding celebration. Hello. Yeah. Mm-hmm, Who's mm-hmm. Christ coming for? He's coming for a bride. A bride, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's so good to see the comparison, you know? It's yeah. good to see that. I've, not everyone know, has that knowledge, and I'm happy to see the passion you have about it as well. Oh, love it. I love it. And it's just, you know, since being clean, being set free, it's even more the fires like shut up in my bones where, mm. you know, I don't know if it's because I feel like I have to make up for past, uh, past lost time, time, <laughs> lost time. Uh, or if I still get something to prove, which I know mentally I don't, you know, I you know Christ yeah. did it all, mm-hmm. but perhaps more out of gratefulness. Out yes. of, yeah. Unbelievable thankfulness that Yahweh had saved me from continuing on that path of mm-hmm. uh, hell and destruction. Um, and, and if, you know, at least hell in this lifetime, mm-hmm. but um, destruction for sure, heartache, uh, broken relationships, all that comes with sin. That you know, sin comes to, as a wrong mind to kill steal and destroy yeah yeah don't worry that was your process we all have a process you know that's leading us somewhere that was your process so now you get to talk to other people that that have been have been there as well or that are going through that as well so there's nothing to to maybe feel bad about you have been thank you yeah appreciate that thank you so glory uh are you in training to be a counselor or um, is this just some off the subject that you decided to talk about off the top? No, no, I'm not training to be a counselor. I am a secondary school t- teacher here in the UK. Uh-huh. And I also studied psychology. Okay. Yeah. So what I do is I coach women, you know, women and I empower them to overcome various limitations, oh, yes. limiting beliefs and things like that. And I help them, encourage them to own who they are, you know, to understand their God's given identity Amen. and work in their purpose. So that's what I do. So I love to interview people who have overcome. So everyone watching would see that if you can do it, then they can as well. Amen. It's Amen. been done before, it can be done again. Yes, right. definitely. So it's been great having you here with me, Sean. Thank you, Glory, for allowing me to share uh, a little bit of the testimony. Mm-hmm. What I, I would really like you to it. do now, if, you, if you'd like, is please encourage parents out there or any teenager who may be watching or listening, okay, to this broadcast now. All right, children, stay away from drugs. No, because... <laughs> yeah. They don't do anything productive. Uh, it may be feel good, temporary. Um, it may seem like it's joyful, but it's a hook that only leads to, uh, like I said before, death and destruction. Jails, institutions, and death. Mm-hmm. You don't want to go down that road. But if you're in that road, and you know God has been tugging on your heart, and you've been hearing his voice, but you're chained in the flesh. You're chained in your addiction. There is hope for you. Amen. Listen, I promise you, I promise you, it's better on the other side. And that if you will just call out to God, he says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. It is true. Mm. And it can be true for you. If you are struggling right now, 
surround yourself with people who are passionate for the Lord. Not mm -hmm. somebody who just goes to church. Because you want somebody who is passionate and on fire and will talk to you daily about the things of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, like Lori said, you don't have to get cleaned up first in order to get saved, in order to get, get set free. Mm -hmm. Nobody washes their feet before they take a bath. Hello? <laughs> no. <laughs> so well, true. Jesus is your bath. You don't need to worry about washing your feet. Yeshua will cleanse you from the Amen. inside out, mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom. He will cleanse every single part of you. You just have to grab hold, get into a body of believers, but most importantly, desire to know him. Mm -hmm. And the word says, how can a young man cleanse his way? Mm. By the washing of the word mm. in Psalms 1, right? So Psalms 1 says that. So I encourage you to, to grab hold of God. I encourage you to get with a group of like-minded believers who are passionate about, mm -hmm. about the Lord. I encourage you to fill your mind with edifying things such as uh, things on YouTube. I love watching Ray Comfort. He's an evangelist okay. uh, who shares how to preach the word. Um, mm. and, and you have to give it away. You can't just keep it in. No. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your co-workers. Share it with strangers. Mm -hmm. and then I love Todd White as there. well sorry what's that? I love Todd White as well on YouTube Todd White, I haven't yeah. heard of him I'm going to break that down, Todd White yeah so good well, when, you, when you find there is something in, in God's plan for you because he created you for a purpose he says yes. to the Israelites, when they were struggling, when they were going into captivity, mm. he says, hey, listen, my thoughts for you are uh, thoughts of good, not mm -hmm. of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Mm -hmm. Right now you may be struggling, but there is a future and a hope. Uh, and if, if you just trust him, I promise you, from experience, you can be set free. Mm. You can walk in freedom. You can be... Um, Mm. You, you can live life with joy and speak with hope. Yeah. And you don't have to go off to the big things. You don't have to have your name in lights because if you're faithful with the small things, you'll be faithful with the with big things. And let me tell you something. This There's nothing on this earth that you go through for God that will not be worth it because Jesus said, for the joy set, set before him, Mm -hmm. You kind of think for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Mm. Think about how much joy that had to be. Mm -hmm. Think about, well, I'm going to go through this torture, but you know what? There's going to be joy on the other side that's going to motivate me to suffer like that. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. that joy was? Hmm. It was you. You were that joy. Hallelujah. Said, that's good. <laughs> Yes. He wanted you. He said, I'm going to do this for Sean. Mm. I'm going to do this for Glory. Mm. I'm going to do this for Todd. I'm mm. doing it for you because I love you. Yes. Mm. He that's loves awesome. you that much. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> Amen. So listen, so whatever you're going through right now, I want to encourage you just to say a prayer. To, you know, it's not mandated in the Bible that you have a certain set prayer to reach out to God. You just have to say, Lord, I, I need you. Mm -hmm. I am a mm -hmm. sinner. Mm -hmm. I have made mistakes. And sin just means missing the mark. You know, yeah. 1 John 2, 6 says sin is, a law, sin is lawlessness. The, the Torah teaches us what sin is. The law teaches us what sin is, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you that whatever struggle you may be in. In fact, I have many friends who are in the uh, LGBT community, okay. and and I talk to them, and they they always get up, hung up on their lifestyle. I said, let's take that out. Let's take the lifestyle out for a second. Mm. Are you a good person? Well, I believe I am. Okay. Mm. Have you ever challenged that? Well, what do you mean? Well, let's see if you're a good person. All right. 
Have you ever lied? <laughs> yeah, you have. Okay, what does that make you? A liar. Very good. Okay. <laughs> so, have you ever stole anything? No matter irrelevant of its worth, paper clip, uh, mm -hmm. you know, paper from school, uh, pencil yeah. from work. You yeah. Know, have you ever stolen anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what, is, what do you call somebody who steals? And then you just say, a thief, right? And what does that make you? A thief. <laughs> no, it makes you a lying thief. Oh, a lying sorry. thief, okay. <laughs> right. right. Have you ever uh, have you ever used God's name in vain? Mm. Right? And there's some very serious uh, consequences, blasphemy mm. in the Bible. Mm. Uh, have you ever um, have you ever disrespected your parents? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You have okay. Um, so no, I'm not judging you, but from your own words, you told me that you're a lying, thieving, blasphemer, <laughs> rebellious son or daughter <laughs> at heart, and those are just four of the Ten Commandments. And if you were to stand before God right now, and in uh, based on those four commandments out of the ten, would you be innocent or guilty? <laughs> Heaven or hell? Mm -hmm. And then they do that. So it has nothing to do with your. Lifestyle, lifestyle right now right we didn't talk about that mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. talked about these four things so let's talk about how we can correct that how mm -hmm. we can how see you're just like me i'm a sinner just like you i've done those four things mm -hmm. right uh the other one i usually use is to give a look at a person with lust okay mm -hmm. so so you're a lying thieving adultering uh of uh adultering blast to my heart mm -hmm. is what i usually go with and then they say, well, you've done these four things that uh, you said you know you'd be guilty of. Do you know what happens? Do you know, do you, do you know how we can solve this situation? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I present the gospel to them. Oh, well, that's and good. I, yeah. That's not me. That's Ray Comfort. He teaches mm. that. Wow. That's so, Ray, much, Ray, wisdom. That. so really really is, much wisdom. So much wisdom there. It really is great to be able to understand and share the word. Uh, wow mm. with a with an unbeliever or somebody who's trying to use their lifestyle as a way to squirt them out of you know hearing the gospel you just mm -hmm. take that out of the picture it has yeah. nothing to do with the lifestyle it mm -hmm. has everything to do with your relationship with the living breathing creator who created mm. you for with a plan and a purpose mm. so good thank you so much before i let you go you mentioned sociogram what is that <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, this was awesome. So, a social gram. So, I was in this rehabil of, uh, faith based uh, re rehabilitation for drugs and alcohol to, called Dunklin Memorial, uh, mm -hmm. Dunklin Memorial Camp. Okay. Agency, or center. They would put tables, eight foot tables and arrange them in a horseshoe fashion. Right. Right. And in the middle of a horseshoe fashion was a stool, right? So mm. you had, picture this eight feet, and you had about 20 people sitting on all sides, right, okay. in a U shape, mm -hmm. right? So you had, you, every, every Monday at the social ground, you had six votes you had to cast. Three good votes and three negative votes. If you right. Mm -hmm. About somebody's character, right? Mm. Now, keep in mind, these are people you worked with, uh, people you um, did small groups with, people you might have done recreational sports or uh, whatever. With, yeah. You were there 24 7 with these people, in mm -hmm. other words, right? Mm -hmm. They knew your uh, character. Character. Right? <laughs> yeah. So the social gram, one person can get 15 or 16 negative comments about one character defect. Like mine would be, was and probably still is sarcasm, right? Mm, right. Sarcastic sometimes. Yeah. Right? So when you know, or pride, uh, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. right? Or selfishness, self centeredness yeah. or, you know, you have all these things you can, you can 
Um, and I still have the sociogram sheet that I can send to you if you like. You okay. That would be um, nice, yeah. So when you have, it's one thing if somebody says, Sean, you look pretty selfish out there, or Sean, you look pretty prideful there, uh, or Sean, you look pretty, uh, you know, um, Greedy or greedy, yeah. 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 It's still morning, I'm still not awake. I, 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 okay. so, <laughs> so, when they um, when they say uh, uh, when they grant you on the same 15 people grant you on the same character defect, mm. it's like wow, an eye opener. That. You can excuse it when one or two people say, "Ah, it's just the way you think." But when fifteen, 15. people tell you you have this character defect, and you're in complete denial, it's like you you're you're like in the seat, kind of like blown away mm. by this revelation that you really don't want to hear, but you yeah. need to, mm. Mm. right? So, um, wow. so anyways, it really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I was doing that I didn't realize I was doing. Mm. And it, it taught me the number one thing, and that thing is to receive, the ability to receive. Yes. Mm. Most people do not know how to receive. But for instance, let me give you a scenario. Mm -hmm. You're walking down the street, and people keep, keep kicking you as you... In, in your back and in your butt as you uh, continue to walk down the street. And you're like, what the heck? Why are they? Yeah. And you get to this one person, brother, Sean, hey, brother, listen, I love you. I want you to know that the reason this has happened is you get this big kick me sound on your back. Oh. And then you can take it down. Oh, great. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Hey, scenario number two, you're walking down and getting kicked in the head and kicked in. Some guy comes up to you and goes, what are you doing, idiot? You're so yeah. stupid. And you get this kick me sign on your back. What are you, you like being kicked? What are you, dumb? You're so dumb. You get that kick me sign off of you. You're an idiot. Right? Mm. Which one did it the right way? The first one. They both did it the right way. Really? They oh. They both told you you had the a truth. kick me sign on <laughs> your back. The, the, th the truth. The thing is, could you receive it? Mm. You can receive it one way, but when a guy said the truth another way, were you able to receive it? Right. Probably not. Mm. So Doug taught me that no matter how the truth comes, no matter how I hear it, just to be able to say, wait a minute, thank you, let me take a look at that. Yeah. Then you can evaluate, is it true, or mm. is it from you know, their perspective? Mm. If it's true, and you have the ability to receive, you can take that kick me sign, no matter how they say it, off your back. Mm -hmm. You can take that pride off your oh, back. You can take that yeah. selfishness mm. off your back. And you don't have to suffer those consequences or continue that suffering mm. because you were not able to receive. Wow, that's a Holy Spirit moment there. I feel that. Oh my God! <laughs> So good. <laughs> Do you know what? We could go on and on. This is a very good, you know, it's know, very good. But thank you so much, Sean. I've enjoyed having this interview with you today. It's been a pleasure and glory. It was such a pleasure to be a guest speaker. Uh, next time we talk, I'll have to know more about you. I know this is your interview, but yeah. sometime in the world, I'm going to ask you to interview on my show. Uh, so I would love fine. to come. I would love to be on your show. Why not? Yes. Absolutely. Less of me, more, more of him. Hallelujah. Yes, more of him. More of him. So mm -hmm. true. Thank you so much. And send me let... link, please. My email. Yeah, and the link to this when you post this. Or oh, yeah. Whatever, I will. I, whatever you're going to use it for. Because if you don't mind, I'd like to use it on my YouTube channel as well. Definitely. I will share it with you so you can share okay. on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Excellent. All right, then. God bless. Thank you so God much. Bless. Enjoy All the right. rest of your day. You as well. All right, Thank then. Bye. Bye.